Welcome to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike, tech, and maintenance related questions. And you can submit your questions down in the comments section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer them. Without further ado, this week's first question. In fact, we've got two questions on the same theme. First one from NH saying, GCN should invest in an e-motorbike to go filming. The engine noise is drowning out the recordings and also it means there's no petrol fumes for the presenters. Win-win, eco-friendly. And Pascal Janietz uh, says, when is the time GCN switches to e-scooters for the camera vehicle? Right. We get a lot of comments about this recently, um, and rightly so. Thanks for pointing it out. And I just wanted to make you aware that it is something that we are aware of too. And yeah, we would love to be able to switch to e-scooters, and we have experimented with it on a few videos. The problem we've got at the moment, though, is still one of logistics and making sure that the scooter doesn't run out of juice halfway through the shoot, because you have to factor in that the, sh the shoot's you know, the scooter has to travel to and from the chute as well, as well as perform on the chute. And there's not always charging points available. And the range on motorbikes isn't great at the moment on electric motorbikes. So yeah, the technology is progressing though, and we are looking to do it more and more in the future. So rest assured, we're on the case. Uh, next question is from Sebastian Bong, who says, what is the ideal rim height for my bike for the optimal aero benefits? Um, should I have an equal height between my front wheel and my rear wheel? Um, I pr cycle in predominantly a, a flat area, susceptible to crosswinds, um, but also don't want to have a second pair when I go to the mountains. And there's another question from MS on the same topic saying, is 60 millimeter deep carbon wheels a good all rounder? And if so, is it true that running them with tan sidewalls will save me 20 watts? Um, Town sidewalls look mint on the right bike, and if something looks good, then it's obviously faster, isn't it? Uh, but, um, so, you know, this is a question that we get asked a lot, and in terms of the ideal rim depth, it's going to be personal in terms of what you can tolerate with the handling of the bike. I'm not an especially heavy rider, and I find that for all round use, kind of 45 millimeters I really like because 60 is faster but I find I'm not comfortable riding with my hands off the bars with 60 because I feel it can just sort of catch the wind. Um, but you know, by all means, try it out. And you can ride deep wheels in the mountains if you have to. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference um, as we've shown in many videos. In terms of where you should have the depth of the wheels, well, y you can ride different depths front and rear. It's just kind of a fashion thing that people like to ride for the look of the bike, the same depth front and rear. There is an argument that you could kind of, well, say we should ride a deeper depth in the front because the front wheel counts for more than the rear wheel in a lot of aerodynamic situations. However, it's that impact on handling. That's why discs are allowed on rear wheels, but you don't tend to see discs on the front wheel because the front wheel can move and steer and pivot. And therefore, you know, it's on a hinge joint. So then if the wind catches it, it can throw you off course. Whereas if the wind catches a deeper wheel in the rear, it's kind of easier to, to cope with the handling of that. So that's something to bear in mind. But yeah, the deeper wheel is always gonna be the faster wheel. Um, but for all round use, personally, for me, 45. Uh, next question is from B Dome 10. Are there any alternatives to bike chain lube that you can use in a pinch, such as motor oil or mineral oil? Uh, yeah, there are actually. Uh, it, a, a good top tip is if the, you ever go out and you run out of lube and your drivetrain gets really noisy and dry you'll, and start making a racket, you'll hear it. Uh, maybe you get caught in a load of prolonged rain. If you stop at a cafe um, and there's no bike shops open because <laughs> you get lube at a bike shop, but if you stop at a cafe, get them, borrow some olive oil or some, uh, or some sunflower oil off them, put that on your chain. That'll get you home, that'll sort you out. I've done that before, it does work. And in fact, Friction Facts tested olive oil out as a lubricant many years ago and found that, uh, well, the good old extra virgin, it, uh, it, it performs remarkably well. It was kind of like mid-pack mid amongst lubes that you can buy, um, <laughs> which was quite amusing. So, olive oil. Um, Mr. War Freak, says, is it possible to connect Ultegra DI2 derailleurs to Jura Ace DI2 shifters? Absolutely, 
100% is. One of the, the great things about Shimano DI2 group sets is it's all kind of just plug and play in there. Um, the only area where that might change is if a new generation of, uh, of Shimano Dura Ace or Ultegra comes out in which case if it becomes 12 speed, which is what the speculation is, that probably won't be compatible and you won't be able to plug that into the old 11 speed group sets. But yeah, otherwise you can. Next question is from David Heathfield, who says, I thought short nose saddles were a combination of the UCR rules about how far over the bottom bracket you could go and getting further forward over the bottom bracket. Was that wrong? Right, so good question, David. This is a short nose saddle from Seller Italia. It's, um, a similar profile to some of their longer nose sort of SLR saddles, which would normally be the same shape, but sort of finish where my fingers are. The tip has been cut off, so now it's a short nose saddle essentially. The shape has actually been refined in a few other ways, but that's the long and short of it. Now, there is an argument for pro riders using short nose saddles because of pesky UCI rules on their time trial bikes, which meant that Riders wanted to come further forward and push their saddles further forward over the bottom bracket so they can open up their hip angle and ride in a kind of more aggressive aero position. Uh, however, the, the UCI wanted to sort of control this and didn't want it to get out of hand and therefore created a rule whereby that the saddle has to be a few centimetres from the tip of the saddle. Uh, if you drop a plumb line down to the bottom bracket, it has to be a few centimetres behind the bottom bracket. So. To sort of counter this, saddle manufacturers just sort of went, well, we'll just chop the end of the saddle off anyway. You don't kind of need that bit. It just, when you get in an aero position, the little bit on the end just kind of presses into your soft tissues anyway. So we'll get rid of that bit. So that was part of the thinking. However, saddle brands then started experimenting more with short nose saddles. And the kind of, you know, when you talk to brands like Seller Italia, as they've then looked at the ergonomics of saddles and experimented with it further, They've kind of, when you look at the evolution of all their saddles over the last 20 years, they've kind of evolved into a shorter, slightly shorter shape anyway, because the designers have worked out that, yeah, you, you typically don't need that bit on the end. And it's better if you're sat in this portion of the saddle and you're properly sat in it, it's supporting you better than if you're kind of just on the rivet. So yes, they kind of did come about partly because of the, the TT ruling, but then, they've kind of caught on for just being pretty good after that anyway. A couple of inner tube questions now. Uh, the first one comes from Wheel Free, who says, can I inject sealant into an inner tube? Yes, you can. I've tried it uh, to, this is to add puncture protection. Um, I've tried it and it did work. And in some instances it did seal some punctures, severe ones it, it struggled with. But yes, you can. One caveat though is to be aware of latex inner tubes and the sealant you're using. Some sealants aren't compatible with latex tubes and it will damage the latex tube. So just check that if you are wanting to use latex tubes. This is also something the pros have actually done. In races such as Paris-Roubaix, I've spotted pro mechanics injecting the tubular tires, which have an inner tube in them, um, with, with sealant to add extra puncture protection too, around sort of, 20 to 30 millilitres of sealant if you're measuring it out with a syringe, which you should be, always good to be accurate. Uh, and the next one wasn't a question, but it was a comment, but I was, it was really, it was news to me, so I wanna read it out to you, which is also about inner tubes. So Norm Smith says, hi GCN Tech, you should know that you can't use a CO2 inflator on a latex tube because the cold air that comes out from the CO2 cartridge, it then sort of temporarily freezes the, the latex inner tube and makes it very brittle. Um, and then he's had frustrating experiences where he's used a CO2 tube to fix a latex uh, tube on the road and then it's punctured straight away. And then he's worked it out. So he suggests if you run latex tubes and you're gonna use CO2, carry butyl tubes as spares. I think that's a great piece of advice. So thanks Norm Smith for that, because that hadn't occurred to me either, but it makes total sense because when I used to work in a chemistry lab, I used to play around with rubber and cryogenic liquids and smash them, all sorts of stuff. Um, and yeah, rubber does, well, latex does get very brittle when it freezes. Right, that's all we've got time for this week. So I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if I've not got around to answering your question, then I'm sorry, but please try and submit it again and we'll do our best to answer them because it's always a pleasure answering your questions and we try and answer as many of them as we can. But uh, remember, use the hashtag AskGCNTech and either myself or Alex, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.